He said, call on me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. How many of you ever knew that verse existed in the Bible? I know you probably heard it. So now, what do you do now? You take that word that God's given me, which, which he has set high above his name, and he says, call on me, and I'll answer you. So the next time you begin to pray, you say, God, you told me to call on you, and I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. Amen. How many of you got some situations in your life you need God to come in and do something? Amen? Amen. 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 I mean, you really got something. You, how many of you are tired of where you are in your life? You know, God has an existing change and a blessing that's waiting on you if you just step over into the blessing. But you and I say, I will. He shows up. He's waiting. And when you come to a point that you have enough of what you've been doing, you're willing to let go of your independence. You're willing to let go of your stubbornness. You're willing to let go of your pride. And you will humble yourself and say, God, I need you. Because the one one thing about this message today is there is a question that every believer has. When I get born again, and I've gotten born again, and I accept Jesus Christ, what do I do next? You ever ask that question? What is it that we do next? And that's usually what's left out of most of our sermons and our understanding. I'm going to share that. I'm going to show that to you today. So we understand this, that, 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 that God's name is magnified, above, I mean, his, his word is magnified above his name. And he says in this word, he, gave, he called the word, he says, call unto me, and I will answer him, and show you great and mighty things, which you know not. I say, thank you, Lord, show me. Amen. 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 All right, so now with all that concept about the word, go back over to 1 John, let me show you something. So again, we're talking about his word. Talk about his word, you got to talk about his word. How many of you gossip in here? None of you. None of that. Nobody here talk about. No. Talk about anybody. Nobody. Are y'all going? Y'all going to move together? You know, you're not a part of the telephone ministry, are you? Cell phone ministry. Do you know what she did? You know me, honey, and you know what I heard? You weren't there, but I heard this. And I don't like repeating gossip. But, but I want you to go to 1 John chapter 5 and I want you to see what God has to say about his word. Verse 14. 1 John chapter 5. He says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. He's talking about God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. What does it say? He hears you if you ask anything according to his will, he hears you. Okay? And he says, verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition. That means your list of desire. He says, and we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. A desire is what you want. So you got to ask it according to his will. He'll give it to you according to his will. His will is what? The word. If you know what he said about it, you, he, like, it's like he said, call upon me and I'll show you greater mighty things you ain't never seen before. He says, and what he does is, he is, see what happened, let me tell you what the Holy did, Holy Ghost did, and what Jesus did. He saved us by his blood. Jesus, God sent his son through 14 generations and came down and, 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 and put on flesh. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, who was in the beginning, when he said, let us make man in our image. That us is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And when they came together, God produced uh, 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 a thing called man. He breathed, uh, this creature called man, he breathed in him and breathed the breath of life and the man became a triune being just like God himself. Walked around, act like God, had everything that God had. God said, whatever I made on this earth is yours. Just do one thing that I ask you to don't eat of that tree. And that crazy woman he had. Oh. <laughs> you see, God, 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 now let me talk to the fellas there. God, 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 
and made them a woman. So he knew that. So he could have said, God, this crazy woman came over here and grabbed this uh, stuff off this tree and tried to give it to me. So give me another one. I got, I got 12 molded ribs. <laughs> was so good. Oh, we just couldn't do it that. Oh, now you know, that's one thing, man. We, our mama cooked for us. Our mama iron our clothes. Our mama wash our clothes. And mama, clothes, and your mama even let you stay home for free for some, some of y'all. Uh, but your mama can't give you that loving like a woman can. Y'all been church so long, y'all know about that? <laughs> your mama can't give you what your woman you gives you. Yeah. He gave you a woman. The man was so in love, was so good to him. I'll die with you. I'll go to work for you. Let me go, man. Oh, let me leave that. <laughs> you want to get your good man, the first thing you got to find out, does he want to go to work for you? Ladies, young ladies, if he won't work for you, forget that class. That's my marriage uh, uh, class, y'all understand. Okay. All right. Here, so what's that? Oh, no, no. So, so, so God sent his son to 24 generations, and, I mean, uh, 14 generations, and he found a woman who was worthy named Mary. Came to him miraculously, put his son, by the word she came. They said, he said that you are going to have a child. She says, how can that be? He says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you shall receive a son. His name shall be called Jesus. She said, be it unto me just like you see. She, she, she didn't want to know anything else, what it was, how you going to do this, so let it be. When you find out that God says you're healed by the stripes of Jesus, you ought to say, so let it be. And everybody comes to you and the doctor tells you that you got this and you got that and you're going to die, you're a liar. The devil is a liar. I'm sorry, doctor, I respect, I respect what you said and who you are. But God said that I'm healed. God says, I'm blessed. God says, I'm this child. God says, I'm forgiven. Anybody who remembers your sin, they ain't worth being around. They are not being worth being around. I don't care what you was and what you did yesterday, last night. Don't be bringing up my garbage. And if they bring up your garbage, you keep them to the curb. Anybody cannot celebrate you, you don't need to be around them. I'm serious. And y'all been dumbing over yourself because everybody, yeah, I know you're right. The devil is the life. I got healed last night. You, you do so much the day before. God will forgive you right now and change your life right now. And he'll give you his grace right now. And he'll give you the Holy Ghost right now who is designed to lead you in all truth. He's called to speak to you, guide you, change you. If you only say, be it unto me. Somebody say, I believe. Because when you hear the word, you're going to believe it. And when you know it's the word, you know what I'm saying is true right now. You need to be walking in some of this. Every day of your life, my history is not who I am. What people said about me is not who I am. I am who God says I am. And the day I got saved, the day I believed Jesus Christ was the day I got saved. He filled me with the Holy Spirit and has keep on filling me. I am his son because he called me a son. He called me holy. He said he has set me apart. And I didn't do one holy thing. He says I was righteous. I didn't do one righteous thing. But let him take my sins and put them on Jesus Christ. And then he took sin, Jake, Jesus' sins and, and, and his righteousness and put them on me. Because Jesus didn't have no sin. So he took his righteousness and put it on me. And I've been righteous ever since then. You've been righteous ever since then. And don't let the devil and everybody else who used to know you, your friends, don't let your friends come up and tell and remind you of the old stories. The old, old battlefield stories. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The friend was I tell you how you used to do, how you used to go chase the girls and chase the guys. I used to get drunk and get high and do all this. And they, uh, yeah, man, yeah. Don't agree to that. That's who I used to be. Tell the Lord, tell, tell them. And just remind the Lord. I mortified my old man. My old man is mortified. That I means I put that stuff in the dead. I didn't kill myself and hit myself because I love myself. I just told myself, this time for you to die. What I used to be, died. What I was yesterday, died. It had to die because I put on Jesus Christ and I put on his righteousness. 
Jesus. I put on his holiness. I put on for eternal life. I put on the grace and the abundance of grace and the riches of his grace. I put on the abundant life. I put on his, his holiness. I, I, what else was that I put on? I put on justification. I put on redemption. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I put on the new creature. I and you are new creatures. But if you keep going back to what you used to be, that's who you are in the flesh. When I get my new flesh, I'm, I think I, I can't be skinny, so I'm already skinny now. So I may be big and fat again. Amen. I'm in heaven now. I didn't worry about that. Are y'all ready for Jesus to come back? Are you ready for him to come back? It's going to be awesome. Don't be afraid. Get, try, to get, try to be the first one in the line. I want to be the first one in the line. Leave him. But I, I know they come because I know they say so I leave y'all out of God's good. Yes. Awesome. Yes. He just, God just interjected heaven in this place. Yes. Y'all sense heaven now? Yes. As soon as you can, can visualize and imagine what God has promised you, you're already there. That, that's, how, that's how close God is. Heaven is not over there. Heaven is right here. It's just another dimension. He Jesus stepped on the cloud. And when he stepped on the cloud, they took him up. On the Mount of Transfiguration, they went up there to pray with Jesus. And, and, and there was a cloud came over them. They were in the mountain. And Moses and Elijah, I believe that's what it was. Moses and Elijah came down and spoke with Jesus. He didn't come down. They just stepped on the mountain. There was a cloud there. Yeah. <laughs> Read it. It's uh, Luke chapter 9. It was on the Mount of Transfiguration, and Jesus was transformed and transfigured in his glory. And they told him how he was going to die. Mm -hmm. And they stepped back on the cloud. All right. Jesus could have stepped on the cloud with them. Mm -hmm. Then Peter thought, okay, let's go, let's go make some tents so everybody can stay here forever. Because when you're in the presence of God, you want that to stay forever. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to him? Right. He didn't just die a simple death. death. He died for all of us. Yes, how many of you accept his, what he's done for you? Amen. How many of you have accepted Jesus Christ? Yes. And you accepted his death. See, you gotta accept his death. Uh, because he died for your sins. So there can be that translation of his righteousness to you. Other problem is, because many of us come to church, you think you've been a good man. You think you've been doing good. You, you join a church and you service, you've been doing service. That's why I don't like calling church morning service. It is morning worship. Amen. Because if you come to do service, you think you earn something. You can't earn nothing from God. What you gonna earn from God? What, what, is, what, is he, what does he owe you? He owe you for your for you giving tithes? Does he owe you for being a good little boy, a good little girl? Because honestly, none of us are being good. Take the best five seconds in your life and say, Lord, God said, give me the best five seconds in your life, and I and I use that to judge you. Many of you will say, okay, yeah, I'll give you my best five seconds, because I know I didn't do nothing last night for five seconds. And this morning, I was asleep, so I, let me give you this five seconds right here. He will say, not good enough. Because what he's going to say is, you were born in sin. You came into sin. Your daddy was a sinner. So you were a sinner. You didn't have to do nothing. You, when you breathe your first breath, you breathe, breathe as a sinner. You can't get out of it. So your goodness ain't ever going to be good, no matter how good you can do it. What you need is Jesus. Say, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. And I believe. I believe in Jesus. in Jesus. And so with that in mind, God gave us a righteousness that you could not earn, and on the day you got it, you got it. And don't think you can't do, you can, you can do whatever you want to go back in the world and, and, and do what you've been doing. Because he gave you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit teaches us how to be holy and walk in righteousness. And the Holy Spirit knows that you're crazy. He's been with you. He know you. Now, how many of you had a crazy moment last week? Tell the truth. You went back to who you used to be. I know you say it. It was lady driving, driving with me on US-1. And she was driving right next to me. There's a car in front of me. And every time I, I tried to speed up, she sped up. Just enough so I couldn't go in front of her. You might want to cut back in front of her. And then the other car will go up a little bit, and she'll speed up. 
And then I got real close, so she started seeing me moving up. And she looked at me and started doing them, them finger things, you know what I mean? And I'm in church, I can't do that. Okay, but, but she started doing that finger stuff. And you know, I started, I'm like, what shall I do? I want to I wanna roll my window down and, and not be past the blacks for a moment. You know what I mean? At least, at least try to spill over there all over. I'm trying to get to church. And I'm like, oh, y'all don't get no moments like that? I shouldn't do this, but I sure want to. 
I know I shouldn't go over there to this guy's house. I know I shouldn't go to this girl's house. I know I, know I, shouldn't, I shouldn't take this and put this in my pocket. I know I shouldn't tell this lie. I know I should respect and honor my mother. But Lord, I don't want to do that. Help me, Holy Ghost. Lord, I need a job. Holy Spirit, tell me what to do. I, I'm, I know if I walk in this room, I'm going to cuss everybody out of here. <laughs> if I don't bust everybody inside the head. You, know, you ever been mad enough to do that? And before you got there, you thought about it? You didn't meditate on the word. You meditate on beating somebody behind. You thought, I'm going to walk in there and say this to them, and I'm going I'm to do this, and I'm going to do that. And as soon as you get there, the Holy Spirit says, shut up. Just be quiet. And, 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 and then, when, then that's when you, you, hear the, you hear the voice, stand still and know the goodness of the Lord. Amen. And when you stand and hear his voice and hear him do something like that, he fights the battle for you on every hand, every time. If you learn how to trust him, you remember the last time he helped you in your life? And he was talking to anybody's life and do more than that. More than that. He wants to bless you in every which way. But you got to humble yourself before him. And you know what problem we got? I got to stop you. Uh, most of y'all got, most of us, no, most of y'all got a problem. <laughs> Not me. And that, <laughs> that is, when you write, you feel like you're the judge. Mm -hmm. Nobody gave you to be the right, God gave you the right to be right. That's what I'm going to join us by the You don't have the right to be right. We come down on anybody who we realize who has offended me and hurt me and didn't leave up, live up to my standard. And I know I'm right about it because Pastor Blast talked about it on Sunday morning, Romans chapter 8, verse blah, blah, blah. And because you're right, now you got to be the judge. Nobody call you to be the judge. You think you're perfect now because you got some words to stand on. But look back at you. When you look back at you, remember the last time he forgave you and you was plain old guilt. Amen. Can you remember that time? Yeah. And so now you know this person is guilty today, I'm offended you, you know they hurt you, and the whole nine yards, but you still got to let them go, because God let you go. Amen. Amen. Understand that. And when you learn to back off and shut up, God takes on. He'll change somebody, because you can't change nobody. Amen. Stop telling people how to live their life. Amen. I don't know what this is for, but it's for somebody in here. Stop telling people how to live their life, how to deal with their husband, how to deal with their wife, how to deal with their situation, because you don't know what they're going through. Amen. Two sides to every story. Amen. And three. Amen. Yeah, I'm right. It was his, hers, and the Lord. Amen. Yo, are you listening to me? life is awesome. And it is the power of God. And God is willing to take over your life and take you in such a way you wish like I wish when I decided to submit myself to God. Why didn't I do this soon? Why didn't I let him take charge before? Why didn't I just say, okay, God, do what you got to do? But he had to break me and bring me to a place of humility, a broken and a contrite spirit. God says, I will deny, deny I will not deny. If you're, if you're in a situation you've got been broken hard and beat up in every situation, you've got to come and humble yourself and say, God, I repent. And when you, when you have a contrite spirit, that means your spirit has just got to be humble just there. Because I just, I can't do this by myself. The whole concept of Christianity is not like you're going to do some work and you're going to do it right. You come to the conclusion that I can't do this by myself. So lead me again. I wonder if you or any of you are in all, any of those categories. God working on you right now? If he's working on you, you need to humble yourself. Say, Lord, this time, let's do it your way. I just thought about something. You know, it takes a pastor at least four times to go around before I close. How many of you have been in a circle? Pat. Like, you, you're in an airplane and they circle in the airport? Because it's not time to land yet. And you think, how long am I going to sit up here and keep going around this circle? How many in your life, in your life right now, you find yourself going in another circle? 
same thing over and over. And when I get to that thing, I, 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 I do the same. I know what I should do, but I do what I feel like doing. And you're not willing to trust God because that's no man land. You ain't never been over in that land. But I know how to do this and I do it and I know what. You know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen because it keeps getting worse and worse and worse in your life. God's speaking to somebody that's telling to stand up, stand out, and follow me. And you're in here. And so when I ask for an altar call, whoever has that in their life, I want you to come to the altar. We're going we to cancel that. The devil has been defeated. Amen. Amen. And I, I don't have to bind him anymore. I've, I've bound and loose uh, stuff for, for, for about 28 years, going on 29 years. And the Lord told me the other day, he said, you got to bind and loose. Say, the first time you bound him, he was bound. Right. Why do you got to keep saying that every day? So I know he, been, he, he he bound up. So all I got to do is tell what he, the signs and the symptoms that go. It's gone. And once you get that strength, you will start doing it. Are you walking with me? Now it's time in, in, the, in, the, off, in the time in this worship is that for God to show up and do something. Right now in your life, listen to him. Let him speak to you But I pray this prayer. Because he's there. If you are a believer, he's speaking to you. If you're not, you need to get saved. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you Lord. for Jesus. Yes. For we believe in Jesus. Yes. And everybody who's a doubter, we break that spirit, cast them to the feet of Jesus. Yes. Kick them out of our life if necessary. For we believe in Jesus. Yes. Father, we've been going around in circles yes. over and over and over again to the point that, that I know what you're saying and to the point that I'm tired of this to the, to the point that my heart has been broken I have been almost and I'm willing to give up my independence I'm willing to give up my stubbornness I'm willing to give up my pride and to say yes Lord yes I'll do it your way speak to me Holy Ghost and, 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 and I say this, Lord, with all my heart, I've never said it before. Lord, I give you my life. Let my eyes observe your ways. Let my ears hear your voice. And let my heart be full of you. Lead me and guide me. I know you want a blessing. And I receive you now, Holy Ghost. I repent for not following you and knowing you said what you said. But I know you haven't left yet. Be magnified. I ask to get off the circle, the system of cycles of same thing. Now, speak to us while we're here. Tell us what to do, and we'll walk in it. This day is the beginning of the rest of our life in victory. And when you show us this, show forth your grace and your favor. What I mean is, don't make me ashamed, and I know you won't. Don't beat me up, and I know you won't. That's what the devil tries. I receive you, Lord. And I'm not going to do it my way, but it's you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.